Check out the Playmates Godzilla vs. Kong figures at Walmart's website at the links in the description. Kaiju, Turtles, Dragon Ball, and more, it's Steven Story Reviews. Hello there collectors, it's Steven here and I'm coming out of left field here with stuff we didn't even know was going to hit the shelves until it just did. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hong Kong Battle Godzilla and Monkey from Godzilla vs. Kong. If that's right, you know, we had a leak of some stuff last year that, um, you know, we, we were going to get an idea of what was going to be released and these were not there at all. Uh, cool, I guess. So we have a purple and blue Kong and a purple and blue Godzilla. Godzilla is definitely rocking that sort of uh, neon Hong Kong look, whereas Kong is just uh, uh, interesting paint. And this should appeal to a wide variety of folk, those who like the Marmot stuff, and for uh, younger fans, hey! purple and blue monkey and lizard. So let's just cut to the chase and see whether or not these variants are worth adding into your collection. This Kong here is going to include the battle axe that came with the original release, and the battle axe is pretty sloppy. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now this Kong is going to obviously share the body that all three of the Kongs released in the 6 inch scale lineup have had so far. I say 6 inch, that's an approximation, maybe a little bit smaller, c'est la vie, you know what I'm talking about. Now the head sculpt, even though this one's coming with a battle axe, is going to be using the head sculpt from the Kong with fighter jet. So considering that one ran a production at the same time as this one, that makes sense. Now, I'm not really going to go into super duper detail here because, hey, I've already talked about the body. This will be the third time in terms of when I'm recording everything, so I'll let the pictures speak for themselves. However, for the paint application, I think it works really well, but at the same time, I'm kind of scratching my head because I do think that they could have done just a little bit of a better job. Yes, I do understand the price point is 10 bucks, but hear me out. So Kong is going to have some blue paint on his beard, and, uh, well, realistically speaking, that's going to be about it, yeah? And then on his shoulders, he is going to have some blue paint as well. On the arms, he's going to have some blue and purple paint, which, do take note, both on him and Godzilla, the paint does chip relatively easy, but the paint application is rather cool. Now, the battle damage here for Kong on his right bicep, that does pop out just like the other releases. That battle damage is not painted like the Hong Kong lights, so that's something I expected, but hey, cool, the battle damage is retained. So on the main body of Kong, we are going to have some blue paint uh, by his, uh, his hips, just a little bit of blue, and then that's pretty much it. So when we take a look at Godzilla, yeah, he's using translucent plastic, which you'll see in a bit. He's got blue and purple everywhere. Kong has a very, very, very toned down effect compared to Godzilla. And then when we take a look at the axe, the axe is going to be using purple paint, which is actually not as intense as the one that is used on the body. It's actually a bit more red in tone, and it's only going to be on one side of the axe, not the other. Don't know why they did that. They could have at least sprayed the other side blue? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Kong is very weak here in terms of executing that Hong Kong light purple effect. Godzilla, on the other hand, turns that concept up to 11, and oh boy, oh boy. Pretty much cast in translucent plastic and everything is painted. Godzilla looks really friggin' sweet. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it and talk about it overall and talk about some of the finer details. I mean, it, the colors that we're working with here are going to be black, purple, and blue. And right away, you can definitely see that the blue translucent plastic that is going to be used on the main body, and you can actually see where it's kind of connected. It's only going to be on the front half of Godzilla's body. And then we have the tail, which looks good as well. Yeah, yeah. So the finer details of Godzilla, unfortunately, are going to be a bit lost at a distance. But when you look at it up close and personal, Godzilla does look pretty good. His face does look a bit weird with the nothing but translucent plastic and minimal paint applications. You can't actually see whether or not he has teeth. But uh, yeah, that creepiness aside, the head really does look pretty neat. And then taking a look on down at the main body, the arms, the paint blending is very nice. And then taking a look at the torso, the chest area, once again, we do have that battle damage. And that battle damage is actually going to be the red meaty bits that all the other Godzillas had. Not influenced by the Hong Kong lights at all, which actually is pretty impressive. 
Very good job hiding that secret until you reveal it. The legs are going to have a nice mixture of the blue translucent plastic and the purple paint for the highlights, and that even continues on down to his little feetsies. The dorsal plates are actually going to look like Godzilla is charging up to fire his beam, with the base of them being purple, leading up to an atomic blue at the tips. And then taking a look at the tail, it is also executed in a rather nice way as well, going on down to the end of the section of the tail anyway, where we are going to have mostly black, fading into a nice translucent blue with some purple dorsal plates. So overall, I think Godzilla is the heavy hitter here for the two of the releases. Now this Godzilla is going to have a blue beam effect as well, and uh, nothing really to report home about except for that's just going to plug in to his mouth. Articulation for Godzilla and Kong, we already know it, so let's just tackle it pretty quick. We'll start with Kong. So Kong's head is going to be on a swivel, so we can spin it all the way around. Uh, I don't believe it's a ball joint, even though it may be popped in on a ball, so we can't really move it around that much. Shoulders are going to be on a swivel and a hinge, so we can spin the arms around and raise and lower them, just like so, and there goes Godzilla. <laughs> Gotta topple him over. So for the elbows, they are going to be on hinges, and they do swivel as well, so we can spin them around just like so. And then the wrists are going to be on what are effectively swivels. So if they are on ball joints, we're not going to get any sort of real rocker movement. The torso isn't going to feature any point of articulation, no swivel, even though I think it should have had that, but that's okay. The hips are going to have swivels and hinges there. As you can see, so they move just fine. It kicks out about forward and back about that far. And single hinge knees, as you can see here. No ankle swivels, which I do think he could have had, but that's okay for the price point especially. Now, for Godzilla, the articulation is going to be the same as all the others, though I do think this one is particularly loose for mine. For the jaw, we do have a hinge, so his mouth opens and closes. And this one sort of gave me the definitive proof that there is no swivel here in the neck. What I was able to see through here, through this gap that mine had right out the box, is that it looks like the head is plugged into the body on a big square peg. So it, yeah, the old ones can kind of turn a little bit like that, but uh, it's not supposed to do that. So don't do that. At least that's what I'm seeing. Anyway, for the arms, they do swivel around at the shoulders, as you can see here. Both of them will do that, so yay, that's great. For the hips, they are going to swivel around, but they do have limited range of movement due to the sculpt. As you can kind of see here, the legs on this one are particularly loose, so they don't really hold up pose too well. So, yeah, make sure you do have him nicely posed ahead of time before you start banging him around. No swivels at the ankles, which I thought it should have, but say la vie. No bendy wire tail, but we do have one ball joint connection, so this way you can move it around. As I did make mention in the sculpt and paint section, do be careful because it does seem like the paint does like to flake. Particularly, you can see some scuff marks over here on Godzilla. We do have a couple of scuffs down here. You can clearly see that the paint is starting to chip here on this joint, and then over here as well. So do keep that in mind when you're moving these around. Otherwise, the articulation, especially for the price point, is just fine for these guys. Godzilla definitely should have had a neck swivel though. Now we'll head on over to a size comparison so this way you can see how big these are. And Godzilla here from this duo is going to be in this size comparison, not the Hong Kong Kong. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Kong, because, uh, well, the one with fighter jet and this one, again, just going to be repaints, so just something to keep in mind there. And we're going to end it off with a picture of the pretty much whole cast of the MonsterVerse in about the six-inch scale format, one representation one way or another. And who knows, will there be more stories to tell, or are we done? We will know soon enough. Now, of course, since these are going to be repaints and or recasts in different plastic, let's go ahead and take a look at their quote unquote original releases. And as you can see here, yes, the look is absolutely drastic from both far away and up close. So these are two very unique variants that you should probably think about getting at some point or another. And with that being said, buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Now, when it comes to both of these collectively, I do think these are unique and these two go well together. On their own, I don't think that Kong stands up very well because even though the effect is there, I don't feel like Playmates really committed to it. They only went halfway 
no half measures, where Godzilla, he goes up to 11, and I don't know, maybe even goes up to 15. I do think Godzilla is the better of the bunch. The only real weak point is that the paint does like to scratch on these two, but for 10 bucks, I'm not expecting a sealant to be on over these to make sure that these are going to last forever, unless you were to wrap these up in plastic and put them in storage without taking them out of their cardboard prison. So just something to keep in mind. Now, do keep note that these do not seem to be very popular, and the one Walmart display that I saw was completely destroyed only had these left over. So if you like these, these will be easy to find. But with that being said, don't feed the scalpers. Just keep looking and checking Walmart's website. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now you have heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.